Hey guys, let's do an IP camera video today. I often get asked how much terabytes do I need for X amount of cameras for X amount of days. Well, let's take a look at how to calculate that. Okay, so I'm going to start by beating this issue down immediately. There's only one, one, a single setting that determines how much storage your camera is going to use. It doesn't matter if it's a 720p H.264 camera or an 8 megapixel 4K running in H.265. Just this one setting matters in determining how much space a camera is going to use. Are you ready for this? Yes, yes you. Only the bitrate you set matters. Nothing else. If you set your cameras to record 5 megabits per second, it's going to store 5 megabits per second of data. Roughly calculated, 5 megabit equates to 500 kilobytes of data. So that means each second, half a megabyte of storage is used. Okay, let's extrapolate that. For each minute, that means the camera will write roughly 30 megabytes of data. For every hour, that means it's written about 1.8 gigabytes of data. Yes, I'm rounding up a bit. So, for every day of footage that you want to keep from this camera, you're going to need about 43 gigabytes of storage space. Now, let's say you don't have one camera, but 10. That means you'll need 430 gigabytes of storage to keep one day of footage for all cameras. Now, if you want to keep that footage for 30 days, that means you're going to need about 12.9 terabytes. Looking at that in reverse, let's say you have a four terabyte disks with the 10 cameras running at five Mbit, as we just discussed. That means on that four terabyte disk, you can store about nine days of footage. Okay, nice. Video done, that's it. Thank you for watching and I hope, well, okay, no wait. Okay, there is more to it than this, but the bitrate is the main determining factor of how much storage your cameras are going to use. But let's take a look at how you determine what bitrate to use. First, there is the codec used. This used to be H.264, but nowadays we also have H.265, also called HEVC. Basically, H.265 is twice as efficient as H.264 in storing video data. That means either of two things. You can use half the bitrate for the same quality, so two and a half megabit instead of five megabit, or you'll get twice the quality with the same bitrate. For instance, I have most of my eight megapixel 4K models set to five megabits H.265. Using H.264, I would have to set them to 10 megabits, thus using twice the amount of storage to have the same image quality, and while well, that would basically result in half the image retention period I could have, given the same amount of storage. If you're interested in these 4K cameras I'm using, check the video here and here, and I'll also link both in the description below. To calculate bitrate, it's basically linked with how much movement you're expecting in that scene, or said differently, how much information you want to keep coming from the camera. A very static scene can probably do with 4 Mbit, but a scene where you have lots of movement, 6 Mbit or higher is probably better. The value you need is also somewhat linked to the amount of megapixels and frame rate of your camera. More megapixels and or frame rate means more information is available, so a higher bitrate might be needed to preserve that information. As said, I use 5 megabits H.265 on most of my cameras, but some are set to 6 megabit because they have more than average movement in the scene, like trees or some, something else that's always moving. That is for my 8 megapixel 4K 15 frames per second cameras. I also have some 4K 30 frames per second cameras, which again have more information. So I set those to 8 megabits H.265 instead of 5 or 6 megabits 
to get a decent quality and not lose too much due to the compression. Something I wanted to highlight shortly is there's also something called a smart codec. You can often turn on and off above selecting H.264 or H.265. These generally should only be used if you have a camera of a certain brand combined with an NVR of the same brand. And these can improve efficiency, so use less storage for the same quality, or improve quality above H.264 and H.265. Then there's also something called VBR. Generally, we use something called CBR, which stands for Constant Bitrate. VBR stands for Variable Bitrate, and is a mechanism that can vary the bitrate on what is needed at that time. This can result in reduction of storage or a higher image quality, but most people set VBR mode to the highest setting, which causes it to behave almost the same as CBR. I haven't seen a huge difference in, in testing, so I mostly use CBR so I know what to expect. What can save storage is using motion detection, but this isn't without its own caveats. If motion detection doesn't detect the event you want to record, you're left with no images. There are, however, techniques which kind of mitigate that a little bit. I use NX Witness as my NVR software, and I've done some uh, videos about that. And in NX, I can set my schedules to do high-low recording. That means it always records the low-quality feed, which is about 1 megabit in my case, and only when it detects motion does it also record the high quality feed. This results in at least a 50% saving of storage space on average in my case. I have motion events set pretty sensitive and rarely miss anything in the high quality feed. People often ask what I use to run and store everything. Well, I run NX Witness inside of a Proxmox Ubuntu VM with my storage linked over NFS to my NAS storage. On that storage NAS machine, I have a single 4TB disk which only stores my camera footage. Yes, I also have a giant mirror and RAID pool, but the camera data isn't really that important. If that 4TB disk would fail, I'd get an email from the system, replace it, and NX Witness would start recording new footage again. The VM isn't located on that disk. It's a slight risk because I lose the data from before the disk failure, but to be honest, it's not worth the cost of having redundancy for that data. You will need to decide for yourself if it is for you. Speed-wise, since the 10 cameras get written or flushed to the disk at the same time, this works fine. With 10 cameras set to 5 megabit or 6 megabit, that means a maximum speed of, let's say, 60 megabit, thus around 6 to 7 megabytes a second. That's a data rate that any hard disk can easily handle, and I'm able to write and look back camera footage of all cameras at the same time, no problem. On much larger systems, this might become a much more important factor though. For instance, for our events, that system is running on a ZFS RAID 10 of 4 times 12 terabyte Seagate iRunWolf disks partly because I need more storage than a single disk could provide, but we don't want downtime if a disk would fail during an event. The data in that period is also a bit more valuable than my home setup. Last thing I wanted to mention is that certain vendors now have special disks for surveillance usage. Although I haven't tested one personally, I believe these to be their normal NAS variant disks with slightly tuned firmware to be able to handle parallel writes of lots of cameras better. In that regard, I have had good experience with Seagate Ironwolf disks, such as my 4x12TB I use for the events, so I expect their Skyhawk line to work just as well, and they're often cheaper than normal or regular NAS disks. If you're looking for a disk, I'll uh, have some linked in the description, and well, those are affiliate links, so if you would buy one, that would help me out. Well, that's basically most I wanted to say about that. So yes, megapixel, resolution, frame rate, codec, and everything else determines what bitrate you need. But bitrate is the only thing that determines how much storage you're actually going to use. As I mentioned, there are techniques like motion detection and high-low recording which can reduce what you use, but those aren't always an option. For instance, at our events, we record high-quality footage 24 hours a day, 
because it's not worth it to potentially miss anything because of trying to save storage. So, bitrate it is. Determine the bitrate you want to use for your cameras, and then you can calculate how much storage you are going to need. It's as simple as that. If you are done watching this, make sure to check out my other IP camera related videos, such as my 4K IP camera comparisons, my video about PoE, or my videos about NX Witness and VR software. If you have any more questions about this topic and IP cameras, let me know down in the comments or maybe join our Discord server. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye bye.